South Kirby was in the upper division of the Osgoldcross Cross Wappentech that included the townships of South Ensall and Hanpole Stubbs. He came under the rural deanship of Pontefract and the archdeanery of York. So where shall we start on our journey through South Kirby? The modern boundary post stands over the road from South Kirby and Morthorpe Station that was opened in 1879 on the Swindon to Nottingham line. In this photograph of Morthorpe Station taken around 1908 we see Mr John Shaw, the station master, with his family. In this second photograph of Anthony and Annie Willis who were in charge of the station during the 1920s. The station has changed over the years with the old buildings converted into a public bar and restaurant called the Mallard in the 1980s but is now standing empty. As we move on into South Kirby, the houses on the right were built around 1900 and are known locally as Clock Row. Due to the end house on the junction of Barnsley Road and Binstock Lane having a clock built into the corner. Around 1900, Lidgate House and Lodge View were built, along with W. H. Shortworth's Drapers and Outfitters Shop on what is now Barnsley Road. It was first mentioned in Kelly's Directory of 1904. Hawkworth's Drapers Shop is now Motor World, selling parts and accessories for motor cars. The Oak Crown Public House, an unusual three-storey building, was first mentioned in Kelly's Directory of 1822 that the Vichler or landlord was Samuel Radley. Many of the pub landlords also had a second trade that they could run from the premises. In 1838 the Crown landlord Edward Wilson was a shoemaker and in 1857 the landlord William Wilson was a tailor. The Oak Crown Inn has not changed at all from the front of the building but had an extension built on the back many, many years ago. In 1864, the vicar of South Kirby, who then lived in Maltby, gave a plot of land at the side of Lidgate Hill, on which the National Society could build a school. Known as the National Endowed School, and later the Church School, it was a small building in 1864, but enlarged in 1885, and 1891 and again in 1892 due to the influx of children from mining families moving to South Kirby. In 1867 the headmaster was Mr William Mitchell. The Oak Church School on Liggett Hill was demolished in the 1960s and the new South Kirby clinic built in that area. The old school building had stood there for nearly 100 years. Lidgate Farm at the bottom of the hill on the green was worked by Mr Richard Papworth in 1922. When he died, the tenancy of the farm was taken over by George Lumberton, who also became the mail carrier, bringing letters and parcels from Wakefield. The farm was known locally as Longbottom's Farm, until it was demolished to make way for the Langthwaite Grange Industrial Estate. This grass area behind the bush was where Lidgate Farm once stood also Mr Pernell's house and the old South Kirby post office. This is now the entrance to Langthwaite Grange Industrial Estate. South Kirby Green stands at the junction of Lydgate Hill, White Apron Street and Little Inge Lane. It was just an open space at the junction of three lanes when South Kirby was only a small farming community with only a handful of small stone cottages scattered around the area until the opening of South Kirby Colliery in 1874. As we moved down Car Lane past the Oakstone Cottages, number four was a provision shop and in 1922 it was Downton's boot and shoe dealer. In 1912 three new shops were built next to number four. The left shop was John Brown the butchers, the centre one V Lum and the one on the right was Mr E Rayner the barber shop. On the green at the end of Car Lane, the old cottages number two and four have now been made into one house. 
The three shops, built in 1912, have been modernised along with the remaining stone cottages. More old cottages just past the shops date back to 1600. Attached to one of the cottages was a small stone outhouse converted to a fish and chip shop that belonged to Mr Beaumont. The Travellers Inn on the left, at the end of Carl Lane, was not mentioned in Kelly's directory until 1838, when Mr Thomas Umpleby was the landlord. By 1852, George Umpleby was named as Vitula and Wood Turner at the Travellers Inn. The inn was enlarged in 1874, when the pit was sunk, and again in 1893 by Mr Thomas Diamond, who then owned the property. A small stone outhouse attached to the inn became a mortuary until the one at Morthorpe Cemetery was built around 1914, and the Travellers Mortuary then became changing rooms for the local footballers. Rainer's store, built around 1900, is now the South Kirby Post Office, the other half being a mini supermarket. Further down the lane was Little Ings Farm, that was tenanted by Mr John Brown and his son Tom, who had the butcher's shop at the end of the lane and another one on White Apron Street. Near the entrance to Beacon View is where Little Ings Farm had previously stood. Around 1880, the first two brick houses were being built on Little Ings Lane. There were Arthur Street and Emily Street. Opposite Little Ings Farm was the brickyard, where the houses were built around 1885, along with part of Faith Street. Although many terrace houses in the Faith Street area were demolished, many still remain 100 years on. Passing over the stream that separated Licklings Lane and Car Lane before 1914, we find South Kirby Wildlife Pond. A little further down Car Lane, on the left, is the Methodist Chapel, built in 1897 and opened in October of that year. During the Second World War, it was used as a canteen and much later a clothing factory. To the right of the chapel stands a long row of terrace houses, known locally as Bobby's Row, due to the local policeman living in one of the houses. The old Methodist chapel is now a funeral parlour, with a modern South Kirby and Morthorpe cemetery behind. A few shops opened up as people turned their small terrace rooms into shops. Among them, Lake Inn Sweet Shop, Paget's General Store, Fletcher's, Stokes, Arthur Little's Butcher's Shop and Harry Utley's Off Licence and Waterson's Fish and Chip Shop. The remaining houses down the now shortened Car Lane have not changed much since they were built around 1900. Only the odd one or two new properties have been built at the bottom of the lane. Passing under the railway bridges and the bridge over the Hague Beck that is the boundary between North Emsdale and South Kirby, we come to Darrington Terrace and Colliery Row, the first lot of houses built for the South Kirby Colliery in 1876 by Mr Milnthorpe of South Kirby and separated from the pit by the Leeds to London railway line. Standing in front of Collier Row on the land known as Mutton Flats is Flats Farm that was last farmed by Leslie Miles and his wife Annie whose father, William Arend, worked the farm before them. Flats Farm goes back to pre-1698, when Joseph Gill was registered as the tenant. The house, farm buildings and all the land were bought by the National Coal Board and demolished in 1969 to make room for the tipping of colliery waste. Slag heaps now cover the rest of Car Lane including the area of Darrington Terrace, Collier Row and Flats Farm. All that remains is the last 100 metres leading to Kirby Road. In the early 1870s, land was released to the Ferry Hill and Rosendale Iron Company for the purpose of opening a colliery. The attraction being the famed Barnsley Seam of Coal, the finest in Yorkshire. 
Sinking began in 1876 and the Barnsley Sea was reached in 1878 at a depth of 635 yards. Years later the big shaft was made deeper and reached a depth of 725 yards. At its peak the colliery employed over 3,000 men but by the time of the strike in 1984 it had dropped to around 1,000. South Kirby Colliery closed in 1988. <laughs> <laughs> we have now moved back to South Kirby Green where between 1904 and 1905 the Pontefract Cooperative Society built no corp store to cope with the increase of trade due to the influx of miners and their families into the area. The corp butchers slaughtered animals behind the shop to produce fresh meat right up to 1926 when in January of that year the co-op declared that no more slaughtering would take place on their premises on the green. In 1925, a clinic was being held in a room above the cooperative shops for the local children. Back on South Kirby Green, the old co-op buildings are now nearing their centenary. A small stone building to the right of the co-op belonged to Mr Green, who did watch and clock repairs. On the other side of the green, next to Lidgate Farm, was the old stone post office that was bought by Mr Herbert Brunel and his son Lewis to use as a wine store when the post office moved into part of the co-op building that had been Rayner's barber shop. Rayner had now moved into the newly built shops opposite at the end of Car Lane that were built in 1912. Moving from the green towards the church, the stone house on the left was built around 1695. Next to it, the shops on the left were Timothy Whites and Taylor's, the chemist, and the Globe Tea Company. The church hall on the right was built in 1924. The old stone cottage and shops leading up to the church are now past the end of their 300th year. The church hall, built in 1924, was refurbished this year. On the right we passed the vicarage that was built in 1730. The vicar lived there with three servants and a cook. During the Second World War the building was used for making instruments for the war effort. The vicarage was demolished in the 1970s. To the left of the vicarage and down a yard were some old stone buildings. One was used as a blacksmith shop by Mr Jim Fellows and the others used to garage some United Service buses. In 1978 a new house was built where the old vicarage had previously stood. In the area around the church were the rectory and rectory farm, the two houses of Mr Schilling and Mr Badley facing the green, the house of Mr Dennis at the bottom of Dennis's hill or Snicket, a narrow footpath that led up to the North Field. The house of Mr Fred Collins who moved in 1912 to the house opposite Clock Row. The Old Rose and Crown Public Inn mentioned in Kelly's directory of 1822 when the victualler was Mrs Mary Waterton, a member of a prominent local family who ran the inn and was still mentioned in Kelly's directory in 1908. Behind the Rose and Crown, a new house and shop were built in 1924, the corner of Chapel Lane and Northfield Lane. The Church House pub was built in the 1960s, replacing the old Rose and Crown pub that had been the original church house when it was owned by the Priory about 300 years ago. At the top of what is now Chapel Lane, we find Northfield House an old stone house dating back to around 1730. 
Just past Northfield House, you come to Noah Northfield Lane, an old bridle path that went all the way to Badsworth and Pontefract. Apart from a few modern buildings, Chapel Lane remains a small track leading up to Northfield House and Noah Northfield Lane. The church school on Lydgate Hill was overflowing with school children and the Northfield Wesleyan Chapel was set up as a temporary board school in September of 1902. The headmaster was 26 year old Mr Frank Williamson who ran the school with two untrained assistants. The first morning 110 children of various ages entered the school and by June 1903 158 children were on the register. Behind Keys Builders on Northfield Lane is part of the old Northfield Chapel that was built in the 1890s. The Northfield Infants and Meat School opened on the 11th of April 1904, admitting 52 children in the first week. By July the 12th, 312 children were attending the school with class sizes of 50 to 60 children in each class. Mr Frank Williamson was the headmaster of Northfield School until he passed away after a short but famous on the 31st of March 1931 after nearly 30 outstanding years as the headmaster of the Northfield School. The Northfield Lane Junior Infants and Nurses School celebrated their centenary in November 2004. The Northfield Housing Estate, christened Little Wigan, was built around 1923. The Northfield Lane was made wider and extended up to the top of North Street and Queen's Terrace. Although no housing development has taken place at the bottom end of the Northfield Estate, no development has been done at the top end opposite the Northfield School. This plot of land has been set aside for future development. The rectory and rectory farm stood to the west of the tower and was at one time the home of its most famous occupant, George Beaumont was the Vicar of South Kirby from 1640 to 1648. He was hanged during the Civil War for being the accomplice of John Morris who took part in the seizing of Pontefract Castle. In the 1900s the farm became known as Ascombe's Farm. It was kept from public view by a high wall that enclosed the farm and its buildings including a pond. The old rectory farmhouse was demolished for safety reasons after standing next to the South Kirby Church for 500 years. It was replaced by a modern farmhouse. The old barn, the granary, is all that remains of rectory farm. South Kirby Church goes back as far as Saxon's times to pre-800 when it was a wooden Saxon church. The church was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086 and was the last until it was rebuilt as a stone medieval church in the 12th century. It was extended again in the 15th century with a tower 96 foot high. Six bells were installed in 1722, recast from four older bells. The first official name, South Kirby, appeared in 1121 when Henry I confirmed the charter to Cherby, church by, or a village, by a church. The road around the rectory at that time came down White Apron Street, then right onto Stocking Gate, as it does now, then left past the grove and on again between the church and the rectory, then on past the houses of Mr Schilling and Mr Badley, then right again and straight on towards the green. This bottleneck around the rectory was straightened out in 1920 at a cost of £5,000 by demolishing the houses of Mr Schilling and Mr Badley. On the opposite corner of White Apron Street in Stockingate stood a small farm that was last worked by Mr Anderson before it was being demolished. Not one thing remains of the old farm that stood on the corner of Stockingate and White Apron Street and only the older generation will remember it as either Anderson's or Goodwin's farm.
On Stocking Gate Bottom was the Grove, built in the late 17th or early 18th century, and belonging to the Gledhall family, who were local wealthy landowners. In 1874, Mr C. B. E. Wright took up residence at the Grove and ran the stud farm from there until the census of 1881, when he employed several stud grooms. By 1915, Mr C. J. Tyus, MP and JP, was living at the Grove. He sold the house in 1919 to the Carlton Main Coal Company to house the Prickly Colony manager, Mr F. K. Robinson. Later, the house was turned into a convent and run as a day school for young children. The Grove was bought by the local council in 1985 and is now their headquarters. It is also used for social functions and wedding parties. Looking from the bottom of Stocking Gate, over the wall on the left are the grounds belonging to the Grove. Just around the corner on the bend, to the right we find Ryder's Sweet Shop that once was a part of Hillcrest Poultry Farm. Nothing remains of Hillcrest Poultry Farm that was later Ryder's Sweet and Grocery Shop. Further along Stocking Gate was a small owning of Mr A. F. Benyon. At the end of Grove Drive is where Benyon's farm stood, Jack Benyon being the last owner. The old mill was used as a post office until 1913. In 1915, the mill was being used as a mission by the evangelist Mr Tempest until the Mill Lane Mission was built at the top of Stocking Gate in 1917. This photograph shows the Mill Lane Methodist Mission Guide Troop formed by Mrs Smart in 1924. This is the area that the Mill Lane Methodist Chapel once stood. At the top end of Stocking Gate stood the old windmill. It was first mentioned in 1229, but it could have been a post mill around that time, with the stone mill being built much later. Windmills were prone to damage by the wind, and in the storm of 1715 and again in 1856, when the mill was severely damaged. The mill was repaired after each storm until the last one in 1875, when by then South Emsall had a steam mill which was capable of doing the milling for both villages. So the old windmill was never repaired and gradually deteriorated until all the fittings were removed around 1900. Stocking Gate Mill School grounds, the remains of the old mill have been preserved as a reminder of South Kirby's past. In 1900 the old mill public house was built at the top of Mill Lane and the junction of Stocking Gate to cater for the people moving into the newly built houses along Mill Lane and Common Lane. In 1919 the pub landlord was Robert Carling and then Henry Thompson. Common Road School was first opened in 1926 to take in the children from the top end of South Kirby. The old Common Road School has now been demolished and has been replaced by a modern mixed infants and junior school. Around 1921, the land between Holmesley Lane and Common Lane was changed over to building land, and the Holmesley estate was built and given the name Garden City by the local people. A square of land was kept in the centre of the estate for the recreation of children with swings and a play area. The Holmesley estate area has changed very little since it was built in 1921. We have now moved back to the top of Mill Lane to see how it looked around 1920. About halfway down Mill Lane at number 53 and number 55 were Hilda Jones Sweet and Grocery Shop and Horobin's Draper's Store. Looking down Mill Lane today, on the left we see the houses that were built in 1902 and on the right Featherston Villas built in 1913. At the bottom of Mill Lane stands Ardent House built in 1756. It was part of a small farmstead that was last worked by Herbert and Edith Rowley. The old farm buildings stood back from the end of the road, behind where the new crop building stands today. The Northfield Hotel, built in 1921, 
stands at the top of Limp Hill on Holmesley Lane. Behind the pub was an old barn that was used as a sort of gymnasium or youth club in the late night. The Northfield Hotel has not changed on the outside since it was built in 1921. To the left of the Northfield Hotel and directly opposite the end of Kirby Road stood another old barn that in 1923 was converted into three shops known as Johnson's Corner. The shops were taken over by the Barnsley Cooperative some time after they had built the new cooperative store at the bottom of Mill Lane in 1924. Johnson's Corner shops were demolished and replaced by Apple Yard's car sales room, a repair garage. This too was knocked down and replaced by the new cooperative store at the top of Limp Hill. Ballpark Farm stands over the road from Mill Lane End. Built in the late 16 or early 1700s, the name of Charles Alfred Book, the farmer, first appeared in 1899 and again in Kelly's Directory of 1904, when he was also named as the tenant of Low Farm. Around 1923, the buildings of Low Farm were demolished and the farm disappeared. Ballpark Farm, known locally as Book's Farm. The old farmhouse collapsed in the 1960s. It was demolished and a modern farmhouse built in its place. Manor Farm was next to Low Farm and also dated back to 1600s. In Kelly's directory of 1838, Mrs. Elizabeth Nottingham was a teacher at Dame's School that was said to be a part of Manor Farm buildings. In the 1930s, Mr. Jonah Beavis was a tenant at Manor Farm, and in 1939, the tenancy and the land were passed over to Alfred Charles Book at Ballpark Farm. The area of Low Farm and Manor Farm has now been built up with modern housing. Down Green Lane were two more small farmsteads. One belonged to Mr Frank Harrand, who supplied local people with eggs and milk. The other was owned by the Beavers family, who were farming in South Kirby around 1857. In 1861, Joseph Beavers hired out steam traction engines and thrashing machines to all the farms in the local area. The village pound, or pinfold, on White Apron Street, was located where Frank Partridge set up his wallpaper shop around 1908. The next shops on the other side of Lily Street were Fawcett's, The Drapers and Oldfield's Fish and Chip Shop. Frank Partridge's paint and wallpaper shop is now Manor View Beauty Salon. Fawcett's Sweet Shop and Oldfield's Fish and Chip Shop have now been converted into houses. Below the houses is the new Pinfall Garden. A block of lock-up shops were next, with the butchers, the tobacconist and the hardware store, and Cunningham's the cobblers on the corner of Percy Street. The lock-up shops have been converted to living accommodation yet one remains as a Chinese takeaway. On the opposite corner of Percy Street was Pace's the Butchers, who owned the large house that stood back from the road next to the shop. The buildings behind the house were used as Pace's slaughterhouse. Pace's butcher shop and the buildings attached to it have all been demolished long ago and replaced by M&K Builders Merchants, who in turn were taken over by Builders Based Merchant Company. Part of Percy Street is now a small housing estate. South Kirby Cinema, built in 1923 and standing well back from the road on White Apron Street, is set between a butcher's and a baker's. In the 1980s, the cinema, like many other picture houses, turned into a bingo hall and ended its days as a nightclub before being demolished around 1991. The area where the cinema once stood is the new build base, showroom and sales department. Over the road from the cinema stands the Diamond Jubilee Working Men's Club that was first opened around 1900. It was first mentioned in Kelly's directory of 1904 when the club secretary was Mr Henry Green. 
The Diamond Jubilee Working Men's Club had the front entrance bricked up and a large extension built many years ago, along with a new wall to the front of the building. Just below the Diamond Jubilee Club was Walker's Chemist that many will remember. At the bottom of North Street stands the Long House, dating back to around 1600. On the left stood an old farm that was demolished to make way for the building of King Street and Queen's Terrace around 1900. King Street had 90 houses and Queen's Terrace 44 and they too were demolished many years ago. Halfway up North Street on the left we find King's Croft leading to Beach Close, the area that had been previously King Street and Queen's Terrace. Back on White Apron Street and over the road from North Street stands a group of old stone cottages and shops. One of them was Family's Florist Shop then Miller's Hardware Shop and Tom Brown's The Butchers. Further down was Sewell's Ironmonger's Shop. In the 1920s, three shops were built on White Apron Street. On the left was Murphy's Hardware Store, then Pratt's Cake Shop. The one on the right was Samuel and Lily Maiden's Outfitter's Shop. Behind the three shops stood the Old Forge. Later, a cycle repair and garage, along with Fred Hook's house, the Hollies. Two of the three shops that were built in the 1920s and owned by Mr. Fred Hook were leased to the Library Service in 1942. In 1963, the Library Service bought all three shops. Behind the library was where Fred Hook had the old Ford garage. And later, a petrol station. This is where Brown's coaches are today. Next to Frederick's carriage was Anderson's and later Goodwin's farm at the junction of Stockingate and White Apron Street. Over the road from Anderson's farm was another old farmstead called Park Farm that was later Cooper's Hauliers. We are now back at the junction of White Apron Street and Stockingate Bottom where Anderson's and Goodwin's farm had previously stood. Over the road is now Park Gardens where the old park farm used to be. South Kirby Police Station was built in 1986 on part of the land belonging to the old rectory farm. The area in front of the police station is now a feature at the junction of White Apron Street and Stockingate and incorporates the South Kirby War Memorial.